Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Did you ever hear the expression, he's a no-account kid? I'm <laughs> sure you have. Well, let's change that to he's a no-account dog for our story today. Shameful as it is, our town of Naughty Pine has a wrong side of the track social barrier like all the rest of the towns in our country. Now, in the Lord's sight, the one who sweeps the floors and does other menial tasks is just as important as the corporation president or the chief ranger or the doctor and so on. But this isn't true in man's sight. Those who have to do the menial tasks of unsavory work to earn their living are not from the right side of the tracks. Well, let's find out what happens in our story today called The No Good Dog. Now, this story has a lot to do with two fellas by the name of, um... <laughs> you know, Skinny's got a proper first name and last name and probably one that goes in between, but all we've ever called him is Skinny. Say, wait a minute. Uh, Gray Wolf. Yes, Bill? Uh, why don't you come over here and tell the boys and girls this story? You were directly involved in it. By the way, what is uh, Skinny's real name? <laughs> Well, it's Horatio Thornwall Skine. Oh, sure. Now I remember. <laughs> Go ahead, Bill. Okay. Well, the boy is nicknamed Horatio Skinny first off because he hated name Horatio and because he's very thin. To start at the beginning, Skinny was working after school for Jarvis Engel. Jarvis is one of few breeders and trainers of bloodhounds. He has trained a bloodhound that's very popular and well-known. Skinny liked work for Jarvis. He loved the dogs very much. But there's one thorn in his side, the young master angle. Ed is about Skinny's age, but think he very smart. Skinny showed up for work after school as usual. Well, here comes the great dog lover. That's right, Ed. I sure love them dogs. Aren't you ever going to learn how to talk English? What part is it to use? Anyhow, I got work to do. I'll see you later. Oh, Skinny. Yes, sir, Mr. Jarvis? Come here a minute. I got something for you. Sure, Mr. Jarvis. What you got for me, Mr. Jarvis, huh? Would you like this bloodhound puppy? Yeah. You mean you give him to me? For, for keeps, for real? For keeps, for real, Skinny. You want him? Do I want the pup? Do I want him? Oh, boy, I'll say I do. Can I have him right now? Sure, sure. Here he comes. Oh, oh, thank you, my boy. Oh, come on, take it easy while I take Mr. Jarvis. Thank you, Mr. Jarvis, real much. I'll take careful care of the pup. I know you will. That's why I gave him to you. Boy, this is the best-looking pup I ever seen. And all mine. My very own pup. <laughs> best-looking pup, he says. Why, that pooch is a runt. That's why Dad gave him to you. Because he's a no-good dog. Ed, you shut your jealous mouth before I wallop it shut. I don't care if he is a runt pup. I'll feed him real good and, and careful, and he'll grow up to be a regular bloodhound dog. Ed is right, but... Well, I wanted to tell you in a different way, Skinny. What you mean, Mr. Jarvis? Well, you worked for me for a long time now, and you've learned a lot about bloodhounds and dogs in general. Well, you said a mouthful there, sir. When I spotted this rotten the letter, I, I knew we'd need special care. And I decided you'd be just the one to give it to it. Oh, boy, will I ever. Will I ever. This pup has very fine parents, young fellow. He could develop into an exceptionally fine dog, but... Well, he needs this extra care. He's pure-blooded and blue-blooded as they come. You got the papers on him? I'll say I have. Tomorrow I'll give them to you, and just as soon as I've recorded the transfer of ownership, then you can find a safe place to put them. Well, what's his name, Mr. Jarvis? Oh, oh. Ah, it's about a mile long. 
You'd better give him a short and handy one. What you gonna call him? Mm, let me think. I know. I'll call him Peanut, because he's a runt pup. Because he's so small. Peanut? Well, you know, that sounds like a good name for him. Uh, you'd better take Peanut home now. Oh, but I get work today yet. No, no, you don't. This is your day off with pay. Oh, boy, wait till I tell me mother about this. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Thanks a million. Take your no-good dog home. He belongs on the other side of tracks just like you, skinny kid. <laughs> peanut and skinny. Skinny peanut. A no-good dog and a no-good kid. <clears throat> Don't you ever let me hear you talk like that again or I'll whip you to a nub, understand? Yes, father. You know... Ed, Skinny has one thing you don't have. That's a big heart full of love. That's why I gave him that rump pup. You mark my words, someday Peanut will be a great dog. And that's how it all started. That same evening, I had boys club at school gym. The usual plan is to run steam out of the boys with games and sports... Then we sit down for devotional time. I found reverse worked better with group. We were just winding up a basketball game. Yeah, that's all for tonight, fellas. That's it. Ah, uh, sorry. At nine o'clock, quitting time. We play basketball again next week. Now get. Why aren't you heading for a locker room, Skinny? I want to ask you something special, Gray Wolf. Uh-huh. Sure, go ahead. I want you two to come over to my house tonight for a while. <laughs> Who is used to? Why, well, you know, you and Bill. Oh, tonight? Eating now? Yeah. Me mother says it's Jake with her. Will you come, huh? Why, sure, but uh, what's it all about? Oh, it's a secret. You'll see when you get to me house. Okay. I call Bill so he'd be ready when we stop by to pick him up. Come on, down, boy. Ain't he the most perfectly beautiful pup you ever seen? He Ain't most he? certainly is, Kenny. Easy, boy. Come on. And he looks in the pink of condition, yeah, too. I agree. He fine puppy. Of course, he's a little skimpish and undergrowed, but Mr. Mr. Jarvis says that with a lot of poisonal care by yours truly, he'll, he'll get to be a real grown-up dog. I'll say Jarvis right there. Good bloodhounds are hard to come by these days, young fella. Yes, sir, I know it. Uh, we think it honor to be first of your friends to see your puppy, Skinny. Do you really? I say we do. Say, you're getting close to 10 o'clock and you have school tomorrow. And we've got to hit the trail early in the morning. I ain't even thinking about sleeping tonight. <laughs> well, you'd better. You're going to be awfully tired in the morning. Yeah, I guess. I'll knock off after a while. First, got to stay up and take care of Peanut. Dad? Yes, son? When are you going to give me a pup? Well, I never, never thought of it, Ed. All these dogs are just as much yours as mine. You know that, don't you? Sure, but, but it isn't the same. I'd like to have one that would be just mine. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. You've never shown any personal love for them, so I assumed you weren't interested. Oh, oh but I am. I am. Fine, fine. You go ahead and pick out the pup you want, and he's yours. I'll transfer the papers into your name. Well, you see, Dad, I... That is... Well, you know how it is. Well, that speak is, I, out what's on your mind, son. Don't beat around the bush. Come on out with it. I want you to pick out the pup, Dad. Oh, you do? Yes, sir. I'd like that very much. Why? You know bloodhounds almost as well as I do. Touch your eye teeth on dog biscuits. I know, Dad. But, but you've got the experience. Uh, oh, have I? Who was it that was criticizing some of my methods just the other day? Who called the run pup I gave Skinny an old good dog? You know, that remark was more of a slap at me than for whom it was intended, young man. I know, Dad, but I didn't, uh, that is, I didn't... Oh, come to the point, young fella. You know, first, I was pleased about your asking for the pup. No, I'm not so sure. Why not? Because I smell a cold trail, son. You're not dealing with a pup when you deal with me, young fellow. I've been on lots of trails. Some of them were hot-scented and they lead to results. Others were just a waste of nose muscle. Spit it out. Okay, Dad. You win, like always. 
I want you to pick out my pup because I want the best there is in the kennel. You wanted my experienced eye as insurance against Peanut ever taking top field or show honors, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Will you do it? <laughs> uh, of course I will. You will? <laughs> I've got you pretty punchy, haven't I, son? That's for sure. But, but I don't understand. I expected a battle. All I wanted was the truth. Just the plain, simple truth. Yeah, I'll pick you a sure winner because... Well, because you're my son. And uh, for one other reason... Yes, sir? The other reason I'll pick your pup is... So you'll never be able to say I favored Peanut to your dog. Do you really think he's going to be that good? What words did I give you the other day and told you to mark them? Well, you said Peanut would be a great dog. <laughs> you have a good memory. Yeah, he's going to be a tough competitor. Really tough. But, but, but then why didn't you give him to me? Because you wouldn't have any part of him. Ed... You have little or no love for the weak, the unfortunate, the sick. You hold skin in his dog in complete contempt. Well, at last I found a way to teach you the real values of life. I've finally gotten through that superior shell of yours that's grown up like a horrible disease on you ever since Skinny's been working here. I, I... I've been watching this thing grow on you like a cancer. You've been lippy and smart and haughty. You've even shown disrespect to your mother and me. I, I, I prayed night and day that the good Lord would help me stop this disease that you have before it consumes you entirely. Your egotism is sinful, downright sinful. But, but you're talking to me like I was some, some, some... No, no good kid? Yes. I'm your own flesh and blood. You're supposed to show affection toward me. Why, why you seem to be enjoying all this. Well, if I appear to be, it's only because I've waited so long to, to be able to tell you what's on my heart never been able to get through to you before. You weren't receptive. Well, you're sure getting through now. Oh, well, that pleases me, son. It does? Yes, because at last I've been able to talk to you straight from the shoulder. It's because I... Well, I love you and your mother loves you that we're concerned. You will understand someday when you have a son of your own. Now, let's go pick out that pup, eh? Well, what's the use... I can see I don't stand a chance since you've got your heart set on Peanut as being the great dog. Now, did I say that? Did I really? No, but you sure sounded that way. I'm merely predicting what I believe to be right because of, well, because of the blood, the dog's bloodline. But I'll not help either of you take an advantage. In other words, I won't favor one over the other. You mean you won't help me just a little extra? I'm your son, Ed, remember? That's why I'm doing this, because you are my son. Ed, all my words in this heart-to-heart -heart talk boil down to just this. Yes, sir? You want me to pick your pup, not because I'm your father, because of my years of experience. You want me to pick your dog so you can have an unfair advantage, so you can constantly rub it into skinny. You're going into competition because of jealousy and the superiority complex. Skinny will raise his dog and train Peanut on love. I wonder which dog will win. In the final analysis, which master will win? Jarvis knew he had put down challenge, and Ed knew it, and with set heart, he made up mind to show he and his dog could win. About one year went by, and one day Skinny and Ed were working dogs under careful and skilled eye of Jarvis' angle. Prince. Stay, Prince. Sit. Sit. I said sit. When I tell you to sit, you do it. Oh, so you won't do it, eh? That's more like it. I'll show you who's boss. Your turn, Skinny. Okay, Mr. Jarvis. Say, what's that for? I'm teaching him some whistle signals. I only got one done so far. That one tells Peanut to pay attention to me for commands. <laughs> All right, Peanut. Come. Come, boy. Stay. Stay. Come on, stay. <laughs> oh, this is rich. Boy, what a stupid pooch. Why, he doesn't even know what the word means. Why don't you whistle him a tune and maybe he'll understand that? Maybe that's what confused him. What do you think, Mr. Jarvis? 
Are uh, whistle commands new to him? Yes, sir. Maybe a couple of days, not more, I teach them dumb. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. Try again. Okay. Peanut, you just go back to the start and try again now. And remember, no one knows it in my pocket if you just goof it. Okay, go. Go, boy. What's this nosing in your pocket? Oh, I, I carry these here dog candies in my pocket. And when he does it right, then he can nose one up. Oh, <laughs> I see. Okay, pay attention, Peanut. Come. Stay now. Stay, boy. Good boy. Good dog. Sit. That's fine. Okay. Come. Come on, boy. Sit. Good dog. Come on, Peanuts. Come on. Get your candy. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, any dog would do that for a bribe. I can't eat no bribe. It's a reward. He only gets it if he does it right. Yeah, sure. You don't see me babying my dog. Me mud always says a little love and kindness go a long way. And that's what the world needs and ain't got much of. Maybe I baby my pup, but you ain't gonna get far slapping yours around the way you do. Ah, uh, you train yours your way, and I'll train mine my way. Me mother doesn't beat me when I don't do what I'm told, because she says she wants me to do it because I wants to please her, not because I get beat. Someday Prince ain't gonna do what you tell him because you beat him. For your information, Prince will always do what I say, and he'll become champion, not because he wants to, but because I want him to. Prince is the finest pup in the kennel, and that's more than I can say for yours. What Ed said gave Skinny first hint that two dogs and masters were competing against each other. This bothered him. He came to talk it over with Bill and me. Good evening, Skinny. Oh, hi, Skinny. Come over. Sit down. Lay down over there, Peanut. Lay down. That's a fine-looking bloodhound you have there, young man. Oh, I see he is. <laughs> look at Sheen on coat. Thanks. That's what I come over to chin about. Now, you look strange, Skinny. Something wrong? I think me and Peanuts make it at angle jealous. And I don't want nothing to, to do nothing to hurt Mr. Jarvis. Or... Now, what make you think he jealous? Oh, it's the way he acts and what he says. He keeps rubbing it into Prince as the best pup of the kennel and a champion. Which means that Peanut's a runner to litter. Of course he ain't no champion, but... Well, I don't care one way or the other about Peanut. I just likes him because he's my dog. But I don't want no hard feelings because that ain't right. Uh, Ed uh, rides you quite a bit, doesn't he, Skinny? Sure, but I don't care about that. I think I'll tell Mr. Jarvis that I don't want to show Peanut and keep him home. I learned enough now to train him by myself. Wouldn't you be playing right into Ed's plan by doing that? Yeah, I, I never thought of it that way. Well, thanks, Grey Wolf, uh, Bill. I'll see you later. Come on, Peanut. Come on. Hey, Bill, you know more about this than me to I. <laughs> My eye, especially. Yes, Grey Wolf, I do. Mrs. Skynes asked me to thank Char for giving Skinny the pup and tell him how much good it's done for Skinny. This triggered Jarve into unloading what had been on his heart for a long time. He wants the two boys to compete to see which dog wins. The one raised on love or the one raised with a club. After this, Skinny seemed to know what to do, and he worked hard to train Peanut. Maybe the Lord uh, gave him much great understanding of the problem. You know, the Lord works in strange ways to answer prayer and bring about his plans. The days went by for boy and dog. School, work at the kennels, and field and training bloodhound kept Skinny going full blast. In spite of bad English, Skinny is a very smart lad and has much common sense. Skinny asked me to help him several months later. I met him at the office one Saturday morning early. Hi, Grey Wolf. Oh, good morning, Skinny. <laughs> How are you, Peanut? Well, what we do this time? Well, we trail trade old hose nose here. <laughs> hose nose. <laughs> Where you get that? <laughs> you watch that peanut when we get going. He pushes his nose right along the ground like it was a piece of hose. <laughs> I have to watch close <laughs> what I do. Go get lost. Oh, boy. You sharp and awake. Where you want me to go? Oh, that's for hose nose to find out. Ain't that right, peanut? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get started. Make it easy, Foist. 
Then hot each time. Ah. You got an extra shirt or something I can use to fill his nose full of what you smell like? Yeah, well, <laughs> sure. How about my handkerchief? Sure. Now you go get lost, and, and we'll find out what kind of a nose me bloodhound has. Hello, Engel Kennels. My name's Alf Weems. I live on the north side of Naughty Pine, right at the edge of town. Our little girl's missing for several hours, and we can't find her. We think maybe she's gone into the forest. Can you come right away with your bloodhounds? Sorry, mister. Today's the big dog show here, and we haven't got time. You haven't got time? Well, what about my little girl? She might be in danger right now. We've got to find her. I'll pay whatever you ask. Please bring your dogs, please. Nope, can't do it. Haven't you any heart at all? You've got to help us. Say, I'll tell you what. Uh, do you know Horatio Skines? He's a kid called Skinny, and uh, he's got a bloodhound called Peanut. I, I think I've heard of him. Well, where's he live? Uh, over on your side of town. His mother does washing. He'll find your girl. He's to, supposed to show his dog today, but he won't win anyhow, so it doesn't matter. You all set, Skinny? Yeah, I think so. I'll make sure now. We've got to get going to the show or you'll be late. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, keep Peanut's nose back from the door. We not want to hurt nose. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, Bill, that Alf Weems, and he looked kind of scared. Hey, mister, you, you look bad-winded. What's chasing you? Your name's Skinny? What else? Look at me. Alf, do you need a bloodhound for an emergency? Yeah, little Jenny's wandered off. I, I can't find her. Please, don't go to the dog show. Please help me, please. Who's going to the show? Get in, Mr. Alf. Me and Peanut will find your little girl. Hey, mister, I, I gotta have a piece of your Goyle's clothes so Peanuts can, can get his nose full of what she smells like. I'll get you all the clothes you need. Skinny, we're proud of you. Very proud. You don't know how proud. Oh, cut it out. The man lost his little Goyle. And, and well, bloodhounds is, is to find lost things in people. Here you are, son. Thanks. Here, Peanut. Come on. That. Come on. Come on, boy. Get a nose full of this now. Come on. Okay, he's got it. Come on, let's go. you chicken out, Skinny? I didn't chicken out. I, I was busy. Real important busy. Okay, so you were busy. I'm glad you know which side of the tracks you live on. Why, you didn't stand a chance. Look at these trophies. Yeah, those trophies are sure pretty nice. I wish me and Peanuts had one. But I ain't no crybaby. Stop jabbering, boys. Load the dogs into the truck. What's up, Dad? I don't know, but Bill just called. He's taking us upstate somewhere. Snap to it now. The ranger's car's on its way. Captain, I'm sure you know Jarvis Engel. Uh, yes, he's done work for us before. What's the problem, Captain? A wealthy man on a lone hunting and camping trip disappeared three weeks ago. Uh, they waited long enough to call for help. I'll say they did. Didn't want publicity and tried to find him on their own. Now they've come to their senses and asked for help. Well, you need an article of clothing for the dogs to pick up scent. Well, and here's a jacket. Oh, well, fine. <clears throat> Ed, uh, let the dogs smell this and, <clears throat> and you and I will get rolling. Skinny, you stay here in reserve. Yes, sir. All set, Dad. Let's go. Great Scott Jarvis, you let that slim boy hold four hounds in his harness? Oh, Skinny knows his business. Besides, I'm so black and blue around the waist from three days of trailing, I can hardly breathe. It's no use, Captain. Trails over mountainous and rocky terrain and 
It's too cold. The dogs can't hold the scent. And these two here, old Maud and Sneaker, the best cold-trailing bloodhounds in the business. Hmm. Uh, I know you've worked very hard in this job, and you're an expert, but uh, isn't there one more chance? No, not a one. I tried the dogs at sunrise and sunset, hoping the dew might help pick up the scent. I've tried all during the day. I get so far, and that's it. Say, Jarvis, uh, how about Peanut? He found the weems, youngster. When? The day of the show. Why wasn't I called? I don't know. Forget about that for now. How about Peanut? Yeah, c- can we try Peanut, Mr. Jarvis? Can I please? Well, certainly, but your dog isn't here. Well, what dog are you talking about? Does the boy have a special dog? Nah, just a runt pup, that's all. Well, I'll get Peanut up here on the double if you give the word. Oh, yes, by all means. Let Skinny and Peanut have a try at it. But uh, how are you going to get him here? Helicopter. And lower the dog in a harness right into our laps. This is amazing. What's that, Jarvis? We just passed the place where the other dog stopped. Say, why does Peanut dig up and turn over those small rocks and stones? Scent. Once or twice in a lifetime, there's a bloodhound with a super keen nose. It's a rare gift. Looks like this dog has that gift. Come on, Peanut Boy. Keep your old nose working close to the ground. Come on, boy. Oh, oh, Peanut's trailing on better scent ground now. He's got past the rough spot fine. (laughs) We'll get your man for you now, Captain. that rich guy. Said he wanted to be alone for a while. I guess he didn't figure on me and Peanut. <laughs> Idiot right. old hose knows you. That rich guy gave me ten bucks to buy you dog candy, Peanut. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> uh, did you see the front page of the paper, Skinny? Yeah. Me mother says I, I look like I didn't wash behind me ears for a month. <laughs> of course, then she, she nearly busted me and Peanuts in half, hugging us. Yeah, she even kissed Peanut. That's the third lady that's kissed him. The little girl, her mother, and me mother. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, you've established yourself as a really expert trailer. I'm proud of the way you've brought up your great dog. You'll save many lives, and so will you. Ed, why do you keep opening and closing your mouth without saying a word, huh? You were right, Dad, when you said my attitude would eat me up. It almost did. I wish I were in skinny shoes right now. The trophies I won make me sick when I look at them. Skinny, you've got a great dog. Thanks. I sure am proud of me, no good dog. And there you have it, boys and girls, a story well worth remembering because it proves that it's not what you are but what you do and how you do it that counts. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill comes to you transcribed from the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.